Welcome to the Teesside Takeover. My name's Nathan, aka Purple Viking, and this series is going to be all about Stockton Town FC. Uh, Stockton Town FC are my local team. This is where I'm from. It's literally a 10 minute uh, walkway down the road. Some of my mates actually play for the team. Uh, the aim of the journey essentially is to get them to the Premier League up with the big boys. It's going to be an extremely long journey. Uh, there's at least going to be what, 10 15 seasons, I'm guessing. Uh, the overall aim eventually, though, is to win the Champions League as well. Um, I do stream this on Twitch. Um, I stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays and Sundays, uh, usually from half three till half seven. So if you do want to watch any of it live, feel free to hop into that. I'll drop the link in the description. Um, but yeah, let's get into the series, guys. Uh, a little bit of background about the club. Uh, so it's founded in 1979. It's a semi-professional team uh, currently playing the Northern Football League Division One. In real life, just a bit of history for the club. Um, the club actually, with the COVID situation, um, the season has been declared null. However, they were having a fantastic season. Uh, they were actually 13 points clear at the top of the table. Uh, so it is a shame to kind of see that it's been cancelled. However, we're going to try and replicate that um, and just see how far we can take it. So this is kind of how we are now. Bishop and Road West not really a stadium it's more like a field with a fence um but yeah poor training poor youth and limited youth recruitment in terms of the squad that is apparently their best 11 uh this guy here jonathan franks um is a top earner he's we call him moneybag franks he's the key player uh, and as you can see from his stats at this level of football he is insanely good these are kind of a uh, what we're aiming to do this season so work within wage budget obviously sign players under the age of 23 uh, we want to finish in the top four uh, qualifying round the fa cup and the quarterfinal minimum for the fa vs cup uh, end of next season 2021 2022 i'm not going to read them all you can kind of see them there see what we're doing um so what we'll do is we'll just say this is stockton 2 just for the time being i say that this unfortunately with a with me not recording the first three seasons, I know that's a lot of taking. Uh, it is going to take a bit of a jump, but what I will do is kind of analyse uh, each season uh, throughout the episodes to hopefully not make it too much of a jump. Uh, but in terms of the players, this is the squad you start with. So as you can see, it is rather depleted. Um, <laughs> we don't really have many players. I think all in all, is that one, two? Three, four. One eternity later. We have 17 players uh, for the whole squad, which I guess isn't too bad. Um, but we are very short of some positions. Uh, as you can see, we actually don't have... Yes, we do. I just want to say we don't have a right back. But Joe Carter can play a right back. So we have one right back, uh, one left back, three central defenders, two midfielders. In fact, two midfielders. A lot of right wingers. Uh, two left wingers and two strikers so in terms of the squad uh, there obviously will need to be quite a few changes um, and this is where what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to my actual save uh, and go back to kind of see what happened to the squad as you can imagine in this level of football plenty of the players don't have contracts uh, so it's very much kind of you lose players you get players in really quick and in numbers to kind of get you through the season um what I will do is I'll jump it over to my save now and show you what happened within season one. We'll see you very shortly. So here we are. You don't get to see a full insight, unfortunately, to everything. Uh, I can go into transfers and kind of show you the transfers of the team. But this was the formation that we decided to play. Um, we actually played this for the first two seasons. But in terms of the first year, um, it was to say the least, a very, very successful season. Uh, you can see some of the stats there, some of the kind of how many how many times they played and how they did in terms of goals, overall rating for the season. Um, highest rating, I believe, off the top of my head, was Jonathan Franks, as we expected, was a key player for the, for the squad. Played 36 games, scored 18 goals. Um, so a very good return. However, he was costing us an absolute fortune. We'd expect them sort of numbers be coming back on that money uh in terms of up top the two guys had a cracking season knocking in 50 goals between them uh, so what we'll do is we'll show you how we got on in terms of the competitions here we are so as you can see 
Stockton absolutely demolished the league. Um, so obviously 38 games played. We won 27 of those games, six games more than any other team in the league. Uh, we actually drew quite a lot of games, surprisingly. Uh, we drew 11, um, which, considering our dominance in terms of wins, I thought the, the draws were quite high. However, to counteract the draws, as you can see, we actually had an invincible season. We didn't lose a single game. Um, and before anyone kind of says um, you, you've saved it and cheated, every game played was live on Twitch. Um, so that's... I even can't even come into the argument. Every game was played live on Twitch. Um, so if you do want to kind of tune in, feel free to hop over my Twitch. Uh, I usually stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays and Sundays from 3.30 till 7.30. So yeah, we didn't we didn't lose a game. We drew 11, won 27 uh, and won the overall league by 15 points, which for me, obviously knowing how Stockton are being my local team, is almost close to what they did in real life. Um, I think when the game... The season was nulled. I'll actually show you how the season ended up. So as you can see there, the season actually ended on 30, 30 games played. And although they obviously didn't finish the overall season, they were eight games short. If you look at the kind of results, barring that one loss, um, it's the season is very, very similar. Um, if we just flip back to the FM screen, as you can see, they had 24 5 1. On the football manager side of things, we did 27 11 none. So, very, very similar in terms of results. So, that's that's quite interesting. Whether or not that was just a bit of a coincidence or not, considering the media prediction was fourth, um, it seems a little bit excessive. But in terms of real life, maybe he's, I don't know. Maybe it was it my management skills. Maybe it was it a bit of beginner's luck. Uh, I don't know. But however, the team performed excellent. Uh, transfers. A history. If we go back to our first season, uh, this is what happened. Um, so we lost Sonny Coleman, Joe Carter, James Ward, Michael Arthur, Max Craggs, um, sorry, Max Craggs, and Fred Woodhouse. Uh, and the players we got in, as you can see, we lost... All them players on free, uh, and we got all these players in for free. And what I did is I massively took advantage of the free loan system. Um, so obviously most players can almost get maybe one division higher standard of player in for loan, and normally for free. Uh, every player on this list here, I didn't pay a penny to get them in. Uh, and as you saw in the previous screens, Elliot Rocker was our top scorer. Uh, he's actually retired now. Um, but as you can see, like the guy knocked 23, uh, 23 goals, 37 games in the season. Um, so he had, a, he had an absolute stormer of a season. And considering he was free, like unbelievable. Uh, another good person to mention, I believe, was Reese Harrison, who was my right back. Uh, he was actually six foot four, rapid as well. Um, so he was a cracking right back from our first season. And another one who was really, really good uh, was Alex Lingard. Uh, although not quite as quick as the Reese Harrison player, um, and a lot smaller to be fair, having this versatility down this left wing was amazing. Kind of within those five subs, he, he could potentially be two of them. So that was that was a great, great signing. Uh, and he had a really good season, to be fair. He did, uh, he did the business. Um, who else? I think there was no real... I don't think anybody else did anything amazing, uh, powering probably those three players. Um, any of these were a big loss. I don't. Max Craggs, to be fair, uh, I did need his centre midfield player um, because he was one of the only two players I had in centre mid. So these kind of just replaced him. But in terms of performances, those were the standout ones. Reese Harrison, uh, Lingard, and obviously the big man himself, Elliot Rocker. Um, he totally transform the team uh, but yeah that's how season one went guys absolutely amazing season um 15 points clear at the top um yeah so we'll do guys um we'll go through some of standout fixtures uh, and performances of that season but here we are he's the um he's the overall season and as you're gonna you're gonna say whoa, whoa, whoa hang on you said you went unbeaten aha i went unbeaten in the league um 
as you can see, these are all the friendlies. This one was the FA Cup, and if uh, and this one was the FA Vase or Vase, whichever it is, Vase Vase. Um, quite funnily though, uh, I'll come to those in a second. Um, there's quite a funny story behind both of them. Totally my fault those losses. But look at this for a friendly start, by the way. Four goals, four goals, ten goals, six goals. Only losing one game in the friendlies, which was uh, a bit weird. And we drew against the under-23s, which was very strange. Um, but as soon as we got into the league, it was kind of a real steady steady going. I think, although I did score quite a few goals, I, I think it was my defence that really kind of held the team together. Adam Nicholson from centre-back had an amazing season. Uh, I'll actually show you his stats um, at the end of this and show you how good he was that first season. So... Uh, the the result I was kind of mentioning there, which we lost, which was totally, totally my fault, uh, was this one here against these guys. So we lost 2-1. You look at these stats and you think, wow, you've been totally FM there. Um, there's nothing much you could have done. However, when I looked back at the game, uh, I was I was live streaming at the time uh, and I wasn't really taking too much notice of the FM game. I was a bit engrossed in chat. Um what happens when a team takes a player off you at this level? They can just take it off you. There's no kind of um, transfer fees or anything like that. So there's no kind of real warning. It's just a message. Uh, and when you're kind of flicking through and streaming at the same time, it's quite easy to miss. Uh, and as I mentioned, Lingard, who was my left-back sub, if you can remember, uh, he actually played in goal. Yeah, a five foot seven, five foot seven left-back played in goal. I didn't realise until after when I looked at the stats and thought, this is strange. Um, yeah, and what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll show you the goals. So Tyrese Ruddick and Matt Burley, actually they knocked us out in the 89th minute, which is annoying. However, these two goals kind of explained why I thought there was something a bit fishy going on. So this is the 10th minute in. So casually just running down the right midfield, 30, 40, finish yards. And that happens. Very Ronaldinho-esque, seaman-like. Um, was it a cross? Was it a shot? I have no idea. However, my five foot seven goalkeeper had absolutely no idea where to stand or what to do. Uh, so that resulted in that. This goal, quite to be fair, this one was actually a good strike. But having a, a real keeper in the goal probably could have made a difference. It kind of just loops over him. As you can see, he's an absolute midget in goal. Look how small he is. He's tiny. Uh, however, that was the end of that. That knocked me straight out of the uh, straight out of the FA Cup. And, yeah, ruined my chances of kind of making any money. As you can imagine, the, the money involved in the casual standard league games isn't all that much. Um, so kind of a club of this stature depends on, really relies, in fact, on kind of making some money from these cup games. Hopefully further on getting a, a big fixture. Uh, and a very similar kind of thing happened in this one. I got beat 2-1 again. This time I did have a, a goalkeeper in goal, uh, which was great. However, what happened was I, I played my second team. Obviously at this point I was a little bit further into the league and I was thinking, right, I must kind of make sure I do well in the league. Um, so and normally, like in the FAVs, I looked and I thought, Hmm, these are probably going to be a bit lower than me in the league. Uh, it turns out they're in the exact same division. Uh, and they at the time, they were fourth and I was first. So they were performing well. And me, casually, without looking at them, not taking too much notice, again, totally my fault. Um, I played pretty much my second team. So Hayes didn't used to play. Uh, Cosavella was a 41-year-old um, guy who didn't play. As you can see, I didn't have my main man on, uh, John O'Franks. He didn't play. I didn't even put him on the bench. Um, so I really kind of screwed this game up for the team. Uh, I did lose a player in the 93rd minute, but by then it was already over. And as you can see from the stats, it was totally deserved as well. So yeah, it's totally my fault again. So both cups being knocked out of. Um, but what that did allow me to do is have my fitness levels amazing throughout the whole rest of the season. And as you can see from there... We, we didn't lose another game. And as you can see from defence numbers wise, um, we were pretty sturdy. Barring this like random game here. This was an amazing game, by the way. And it was away at North Shields. 
um, winning 5-4. Barring that game, I don't think there's another game in the whole season where I concede more than two. Wait, I've just spotted one. That one there. So I've conceded three there. Barring that, I didn't concede more than two goals in any game. Which, considering I was meant to come fourth in the league, I thought was an, ama an amazing, amazing achievement. So, absolutely shouts off to my defence. Hats off to them. Um, so, in terms of Adam Nicholson, who I mentioned from centre-back, this is his season. Can I see how he did? Here we are. So, 37 games, 10 goals, 1 assist. Only one player of the match, was a, which is a bit strange. However, he had a 7.35 season. Unbelievable performance. And as you can see from his profile, he has actually some amazing stats for that kind of level. That 15 jump and reach, 6 foot 5. Pretty much double digits in the, in the right areas. So good pace, good stamina, good jumping, good acceleration, good aggression, good decisions, good determination. The marking's good, tackling's good, positioning's good. Everything barring heading, which is weird. You'd probably think you'd have better heading at that height, that standard of player. But even with only three heading, he managed 10 goals. Yeah, so that's the uh, that's the season over, guys. Uh, that is promotion to the next level, which is the Northern Premier League Division 1 North West. Bit of a long title, but hey-ho. Um, so yeah, that's prom us promoted, guys, as the Invincibles. Uh, if you do want to watch anything live, I do stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays and Sundays, all from 3.30 until roughly around 7.30. Uh, so yeah, guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.